Ever find yourself daydreaming about whether your 401k is going to be your best friend or worst enemy? Well, you're not alone. Turns out your thoughts, yes, your thoughts, actually matter to big shot economists. Welcome to Economics Made Simple. Please remember to like this video and click that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. Each month, a select number of Americans are surveyed about their feelings on the economy and where it's headed. The results of that survey are used to create the Consumer Confidence Index, a measure relied on by experts to help them anticipate and even try to shape the country's near-term economic future. To help us learn more about the index, we've brought in a special guest. Think of economists like fortune tellers, always peeking into crystal balls, except their crystal balls are filled with stats and charts. And one of their favorite magic eight balls is the Consumer Confidence Index. The Conference Board, an independent economic research organization, conducts a monthly survey designed to gauge Americans' expectations of both their own financial circumstances as well as those of the broader economy. From this survey, a numerical index is created that allows economists, policymakers, and others to assess the relative optimism that consumers have each month about the economy and their own personal financial situations. Sounds mystifying. So enlighten us, how does this magical survey work? Ah, uh, the magic lies in its simplicity. Each month, random households get hit with five questions. These questions are like tea leaves, you see. Once you brew them all together, they give you the big picture of how confident, or let's be honest, how shaky we all feel about the economy. Tea leaves, you say. So what does this economic tea taste like? Is it more of a sweet chai or a bitter brew? Great question. The index is like a mood ring for the economy. Numbers above 100 mean we're feeling optimistic. Below 100, well, let's just say the economic tea could use a little sugar. For some perspective, the overall index reached an all-time low of 25 in February 2009, while the country was mired in the global financial crisis. The index's record high of 144.7 was reached in January 2000, as the dot-com bubble was still ballooning and people were downright euphoric over the state of the economy. Okay, so the index is used to gauge how consumers feel about the economy now and in the months to come, but what are economists and analysts really hoping to learn? Ultimately, the Conference Confidence Index is meant to be an indicator of whether Americans feel good enough about the economy and their own personal circumstances to spend money in the near-term future. Consumer spending makes up about 70% of GDP, which means that spending is the principal driver of the nation's economy. So when it comes to anticipating the future health of the economy, the Consumer Confidence Index can be a particularly valuable piece of information. Terrific insight, as always. Thanks for brewing up another delightful cup of economic wisdom. I'm glad I could quench your thirst for knowledge. I'll be sure to come back soon. Well, that's all for today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button and watch for more Economics Made Simple.